Rock the dance in any session. Rock up the woman, or rock up the man. Ring the alarm, and I'll sound the dying. Whoa, hey, ring the alarm, and I'll sound the dying. Whoa, hey. Safety Modernization Act may be the most dangerous bill in the history of the U.S. Number one, it puts all U.S. food and all U.S. farms under Homeland Security and the Department of Defense in the event of contamination or an ill-defined emergency. Number two, it would end U.S. sovereignty over its own food supply by insisting on compliance with the WTO, thus threatening national security. Number three, it would remove the right to clean, store, and thus own seed in the U.S., putting control of seeds in the hands of Monsanto and other multinational corporations threatening U.S. security. Number four, it begins the final destruction of what is left of the U.S. economy. Here on this piece of legislation from the folks over the Campaign for Liberty, campaignforliberty.com, their website. It says here that it's in committee right now and that very few representatives have read it. Apparently it will be devastating for everyday folks, but great for factory farming operations like Monsanto and Tyson, to name a few. I have no doubt that, this is again the Campaign for Liberty saying, they have no doubt this legislation was heavily influenced by lobbyists from the huge food producers. It's so broad-based that technically someone with a little backyard garden could be fined and have their property seized. It will affect anyone who produces food, even if they do not sell but only consume it. It will literally put all independent farmers and food producers out of business due to the huge amounts of money it will take to conform to factory farming methods. If people choose to farm without industry standards, such as chemical pesticides and fertilizers, they'll be subject to a variety of harassment from this completely new agency that has never before existed. That's right, a whole new government agency will be created just to police food for our own protection, of course. And, you know, there's more to the story here. Uh, it looks like it criminalizes organic farming, but doesn't actually use the term organic. So they must get into definitions of, you know, what types of farming are criminal versus what aren't. And it's criminal farming defines or yeah organic as uh, criminal farming affects anyone growing food even if they aren't selling but consuming affects anyone producing meat of any kind including wild game it's so broad based that every aspect of growing or producing food can be made illegal and there are no specifics which is bizarre considering how long the legislation is Section 103 is about the administrative aspect of the legislation will allow the appointing of officials from the factory farming corporations and lobbyists and classifying them as experts and allowing them to determine and interpret the legislation. Oh, that's a good idea. So essentially, if you've got a problem with Monsanto, just wait until this new uh, government bureaucracy is formed and the executives from Monsanto are placed upon the regulatory board to make decisions as to whether or not your farm should live or die. This is how companies like Monsanto get as large as they do. We, we set up to Monsanto and uh, we went to trial, invented, ended up the Supreme Party Canada where uh, everything they came after me, they lost, they lost the case, but the Supreme Court ruled that Monsanto's patent on a gene is valid. It doesn't matter how it ends up in any life form, they own and control it. And that was a startling uh, uh, decision, is that uh, even if uh, you have your crop, organic farmer or conventional farmer, and your crop is contaminated, the amount of contamination doesn't matter. They own your seeds and plants, and if you use them, you, uh, you're liable 
able to a lawsuit under patent law. So that's what the case is all about, and uh, that shows how Monsanto can get control over the seed supply and food supply through cross-pollination, direct seed movement, blown into wind or whatever. It doesn't matter how it gets there to cart through. You don't own your seeds or plants anymore. So it would give them, the corporation, sound total control over the seed supply, ultimately the food supply. When the U.S. began its occupation of Iraq back in 2003, one of the stated goals on the part of a lot of policy people behind the scenes was to turn Iraq into a model for the next generation of neoliberal economic policies, to impose a level of forced privatization uh, and corporate dominance over every area of life that goes far beyond anything we've seen really anywhere in the world. There were a hundred special orders that were imposed by Paul Bremer when he was the administrator of Iraq under the first stages of the occupation that were established in a way that they could not be overturned by any future Iraqi constitution. Order 81 had to do with control over seeds, and it made it illegal for Iraqi farmers to plant seeds that are not certified by some international authority. Now, Iraq is where wheat cultivation was first developed. It's really the cradle of human civilization. It's where agriculture was first developed, where people learned to cultivate seeds and till the land and improve crop varieties over time. So there are probably thousands of traditional seed varieties, particularly wheat varieties, that are unique to that part of the world that are no longer legal for Iraqi farmers to grow. We shouldn't unleash uh, this massive experiment on huge numbers of farmers and consumers throughout the world in the absence of knowing what it's going to do. If it were a matter of life and death and survival, the risk might be worth it. But it's not a matter of life and death and survival. It may be a matter of life and death and survival for Monsanto and a few other chemical companies, but for most of us it isn't. We can grow perfect, we can eat perfectly good food without having it genetically modified. And these companies promise that uh, in Africa and other parts of the third world they'll be able to solve the problems of starvation and hunger by means of these crops. Well, if they could actually do that, rather than claim that they might be able to do it in the future, there'd be probably be less argument about it. But the fact is that, uh, at the moment, this is simply a propaganda point that they make to try and justify the technology, claiming to be caring about poor people. Actually, uh, they put almost no effort into caring about poor people. Their whole effort has been put into getting richer themselves. So, um, I see no reason why we should have an experiment inflicted upon us uh, by companies whose only aim is profit um, on this massive scale. It's not worth taking any risks at all on a massive scale uh, if there's no benefit associated with them. The calculus of risk and benefit in this case comes down in favor of avoiding the risks and sticking with what we know and trust. It's the Food Safety Monitorization Act. With me now is Tim Whiteman. He owns a small dairy farm in uh, Ohio. Also, Debbie Stockton. She's with the National Independent Consumers and Farmers Association. Debbie, let me start with you. Um, people are calling me up left and right and saying this thing is a nightmare for for anybody with uh, with a farm, a even a garden uh, down the road. Is any of that true? Yeah, sure, it's absolutely true. The way the bill is written, it has very broad language, and it says that a food production facility shall be considered to be every farm, ranch, orchard, aquacultural facility, vineyard, or confined animal feeding operation. Well, what the bill does not exclude explicitly, it includes implicitly. It does not define farm. It doesn't say a farm is this, that, or the other. It simply says every farm. Well, okay. a farm can be construed... Go ahead. Hey, well, hang on, Debbie. I, I mean, uh, my my grandfather had a, a berry farm. 
Uh, my uh, my uncle okay. still lives on the same street, um, and and he still has a farm, and it's only a, you know a few acres, and he grows corn and everything else. But he shares the corn with his neighbors and, and everything else. That could be regulated now. Absolutely, and just if they say, well, it's not our intent, that's absolutely meaningless because intent has no bearing on what is actually the language in the law. Tell me about this battle over organic foods that's brewing. I mean, why are people getting so fired up about this? Well, what's happening in this country is big agricultural business, large corporations see these co-ops as a threat. Um, they control a majority of the food that's produced in America, and they've hijacked the FDA and government regulatory agencies. If you think about it, these private individuals that go out and, and own a piece of a farm or own a, own a cow and then share in that production of that is a threat to the market share of these corporations. They don't fit into the corporate model, therefore they must be destroyed. What's involved here is, is more intimidation tactics by the police. That's what I believe. Um, it's, it wasn't necessary uh, to, to go in here, guns drawn. I mean, this is a regulatory uh, event. This isn't something where you need to be pointing guns at people. Um, I spoke with the owner of, of Rossum, and he was really shocked when he first saw this footage. In fact, a lot of people online are, are thinking this is a burglary or some other type of event. They don't even believe that it's, it's an actual, you know, a situa the situation that presented itself in the Los Angeles Times. Um, I really was here to talk about Monsanto. I hate to uh, interrupt you, but now... Isn't autism kind of a disease that's just kind of flourished over the last decade or so? Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. In fact, um, only 15 years ago, it was one in, um, less than 15 years ago, it was one in, uh, in 10,000. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, was, it increased to one in 1,000. What, what's very interesting, in some communities, it's as much as, it's, it's very high. So mm -hmm. there's also the, the possibility that was, it's ecological, like again, with, the, with a lot of the problems uh, with for example, there are clusters of this in Long Island where they have pesticides in the land, like in Levertown. There's PCBs cancer, and can, water. PCBs and ca yeah. cancer. Well, first of all, PCBs and all of this is, well, the, what's what I want to talk about Monsanto. People should Google Monsanto and, and look at the history of Monsanto. Monsanto has their hands in everything that we eat. Michael Taylor, um, basically, it was, is, is a attorney and lobbyist for Monsanto. Okay. He has just been appointed by President Obama. Uh, you know, to uh, the FDA food safety SAR. I, I don't know what to say about that. Wow. If that doesn't sound like nepotism collusion on the way to despotism, I don't know what does. Because once you start, this was interesting, it is like an octopus, it's a spider web. You just start talking about Monsanto and these horrific, you know, genocidal things that they've done. <laughs> you know, uh, over the course of the proof. And then they said, they said PCBs were okay and safe. They said Agent R was okay and safe. <laughs> Things that have been proven not to be. Right. Okay, this isn't, I'm not, I, I you know, it's, I, I could say that they've done hideous things and it's absolutely true. Correct. I, I stand to uh, agree So, with you. you know, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, the corporate world has too much control over the political system and they, by design, with the lobbyists and everything else, uh, really uh, are pulling the strings uh, of the politicians, and they are the puppet masters. Doesn't that provide an interesting paradox? Because you have a segment of the population who are trying to get smaller government, but those voices that are proponents for smaller government are being backed by the same corporate interests who are providing the big government aspect between the government colluding with corporate or corporatists. Well, that's very insightful and very true. 